All right. All right, brothers. Hey, Shalom. First and foremost, we want to start this lesson off by giving all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Harakwak Dash. Peace, love, and salutations to you, sincere brothers. Um, noising the true gospel. All right, the true gospel abroad, um, preaching the life, the death. That's the stock here. The, the life, the birth, the life, the death, the conquering of death, and the resurrection of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, right? Um, which in the first century, the Most High sent his only begotten son on the earth um, to kill two birds with one stone. A lot of people don't know Yahweh Shah Mashiach completed the first covenant, right? When he kept the laws to uh, perfection. And in his death, uh, uh, the blood of the tester um, um, established the first covenant. But the first covenant was established upon the the the, the, the birth of Yahweh Shah. His teachings, he, he taught his laws. He taught his ways. He His teachings gave us a, a, a new heart, right? And upon his death, when he conquered um, and became... Um, the power in the heavens on earth and underneath, you know, what did he tell the holy apostles to sit and wait for the spirit of promise? What was that spirit of promise? The spirit of promise was the Holy Ghost, all right, which was the new spirit um, that was going to, that he was going to put in us, all right, and that's his spirit. And this is what's, this is the main message. This is what the gospel is about. The gospel is about um, preaching, you receiving of uh, the word, the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul and them that hear. You receiving the Holy Ghost and the spirit of the living God being in you. All right. Behold, the tabernacles of God dwelling with men. Um, has the fullness of it come yet? No. But did it start? Yes. Did the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven um, come yet? No. But did it start? Yes. Right. What did Yahweh Shai say? He said, uh, the kingdom of heaven dwelleth in you. Right. Uh, were we given power in the first century, starting with the apostles, starting with the Yahweh Shamashek himself to um, cast out demons and to tread on uh, scorpions and snakes? Yes. You know, did, did the fulfillment of that come yet? No. But it's something that we're working on. Right. So, again, um, these guys are set up to tell you these things. Nothing's happening here. You know what I'm saying? That no a, a covenant wasn't established. No, you can't get a new heart, which was connected to that covenant you know so they're still walking around with stony hearts which that word stony goes back to perverse they're still walking around with perverse hearts and and hard heads and th the lord said you know what i'm saying that he was going to come to do what to uh preach the good tidings right and 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 to bind up the broken hearted all right so again all cohesive with uh this new covenant so um first scripture we want to go into um Let's go into the, the book of Galatians, because at this time, what's important is you got men telling men to keep the law to the best of their ability. Literally, um, spiritually, we can see where they're at in between two covenants. Very confused because they speak about the blood of Hamashiach and they speak of grace and mercy, which those two things, those two attributes come with the new covenant. But here instead, they're bewitching people by telling men that they have to keep the law of Moses to the best of their ability, which makes no sense at all. It makes no sense at all. We're in the predicament that we was in before Yahweh Shai came because we had that mindset. You know what I'm saying? We couldn't keep that law. We broke that law, right? So the Lord gave us something that we could do, and men are refusing this. That is what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is, is rejecting uh, God's spirit that he put on this earth. And a lot of men are in error in this time. Yep. Well, you want to start at Galatians? Uh... Two? Uh, two and two. Yep. Uh, hey, Galatians chapter two, verse two, it says, And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that the gospel that it says, let me select you. And I went up by revelations and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles that privately to them which are of reputation least by any means I should run. Hold on, slack here, bro. Can you read that again? Verse four. Uh, slack uh, four. Slack, slack, no, sorry. You're good. You're good. I, I, I jumped ahead. You're good, bro. Keep keep going. Slack here, brother. All right, come on. Let me go. Let me start over again. Okay. okay. Galatians 2 and 2, it says, And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately 
to them which were of reputation. So I just want to say this, guys that that had like a reputation, this was they were hearing this privately from Paul. You got to keep this in mind. So it's the same thing that was happening in um, John three with Nicodemus. So like I I I think we always said we got a bunch of guys that are in the spirit of Nicodemus that are secretly coming over hearing what we're saying. Just a side note. Just a side note. God. It says, but privately to them which are of reputation, at least by any means I should run or have run in vain. It says, but neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. I'll hold it there real quick, right? Because what is Paul saying? Paul tells you three different times in, in Galatians, the first chapter, how this thing, this, this, this doctrine that he's received, this mission that he's sent on, um, uh, um, this gospel that he was taught, he wasn't taught this by men. He was taught this by our, the Lord himself. Right. And then again, going into the book of Acts or the Acts of the Apostles or what the spirit of the Lord God did through the Acts of the Apostles. This is the ultimate mission that the Heavenly Father wanted to do. He wanted to use his Holy Spirit within men to establish his church, to establish the order of Melchizedek, ultimately to establish the kingdom of heaven. And this is what it is that we're going to do. Right. But he said he went up by revelation and communicated the gospel. Right to preach unto the, the, the Gentiles, which Apostle Paul was what the apostle to the Gentiles. Right now, he had brought up Titus with him. All right, now Titus was a Greek. His father was a Greek, and his mother um, was an Israelite. Right, and um, he wasn't compelled to be circumcised, and nor did you know the apostles uh, force him to become circumcised. Right. So now, uh, what we make mention of is. One, we're going to tell you that you don't have to follow the law to the best of your ability because, you know, the Lord died to complete that. And he gave us laws that we could keep 100 percent. Right. But that old law of Moses. Right. Clashes with this new way, this new order of ours. Right. Case in point, in the Levitical priesthood, circumcision was a requirement. It was a necessity. As a matter of fact, it was a sin that was worthy of death. You had Moses, um, because he wasn't going to circumcise his child, he was about to get put to death, right? Yeah. So it was a requirement, right? But under this new law, circumcision in accordance to the flesh is not a requirement. So that is a change. So when we speak of it being a change and men come up against that, they're clearly not preaching the gospel and they're clearly not in the spirit and they clearly have no business calling themselves a teacher. Just sit back and learn and listen as to what the actual gospel is. Right. Um, you could go you yep. can continue on, bro. Yeah. I got a precept for you. We talked about change change. So I'm going to go to sure. Hebrews real quick. Yep. This is uh Hebrews seven to 12. It says for the priesthoods being changed, there is made of a necessity a change also of the law. Go ahead, brother. Speak on that. Yeah. Oh, can you re um. So yeah, if the priesthood is being changed, there must mean a necessity of the change of the law. Why? Because underneath this priesthood, which is the Malak Tazadak, who's our high chief priest, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, is evident that our Lord sprung out of Judah, right? A tribe which uh, Moses spake nothing concerning the priesthood, right? We know underneath the, the Levitical priesthood, in order to be the high chief priest, you have to come out of Aaron. Right. And out of the tribe of Levi. Right. So now, um, you know, prior to this, you had our Lord, um, which was he was uh, picking uh, the, the apostles or the disciples at the time. Right. were picking corn on a Sabbath day. All right. And the scribes and the Pharisees, they say, hey, what's up with this? Right. And the Lord said, well, what about David? Did you see how David uh, ate the showbread, which was only for the priests? But what was that? That was a foreshadowing. All right, of the Malak Tazadak, right? You had the kingship line or the Daviotic covenant and the priesthood, which, which, was, which was given to the Levitical, the Levites, right? But by David eating the showbread, which was only for the priests, what was that uh, a sign of? Of the combining of the two, the, two, the priesthood and the, the, uh, the kingship um, covenant, right? So that law is changed. Any, and again, anybody who's making mentioning of the law being not changed, how can the Lord be your mediator if that law wasn't changed? So, again, you have guys that are in between these two covenants with no understanding. They say that we're not in the new covenant. We're not in the old covenant. You know what I'm saying? This is 
a false doctrine teaching. This is a lack of understanding, right? Um, you got it, brother. Well, I just want to add to that uh, too. When it when it says the priesthoods have changed, like the word redeemed, these things have happened. So it don't matter what man say; the priesthoods have already changed. Right. You know what we have is Satan um, working on men, getting you think to think that things haven't changed, but they have definitely changed. Just like our hearts have changed, our minds have changed. So this is another plot by Satan to hold you in the flesh. So things won't change. So if he holds you to the flesh, things won't change. Right. Sorry, brother. I got Galatians still too. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. Okay, just real quick to that point. Real quick, changed and redeemed. Those are past tense. So these are things that have already happened. But you got it. You could go to Galatians. Oh, is that four? Yeah. Sorry, yep. bro. Uh, Galatians 2 and 4 says, and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privately to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, Yahushua Mashiach, that they might bring us into bondage. So guys, see, see, when guys understand the scriptures on a fleshly level, they have to use these scriptures for something, right? So if somebody came into the camp that they wasn't in agreement, so had a foul spirit or whatever the case may be, they say, guys, tried to come in and inspire out their liberties. Ah, right, cool, bro. But that's not the understanding. What's happening here is you got guys, right, that are trying to come into this thing, proclaim this uh, law of liberty, proclaim this grace and mercy, you know what I'm saying? Proclaim the blood, but try to bring you back into bondage. What is the bondage? The scriptures tell us what the bondage is clearly. Paul tells us in Galatians, can we get just Galatians 5 and 1 real quick? And then we'll go back here just to find out what this bondage is. All right. And in the, in yep. the proper context as to what the scriptures is saying. Unbiased, no filter, no, no spin, no spin zone over here. We're just gonna give you the raw truth. Con, you ready? Yep, Galatians 5 and 1. Con, you got it. Yep. Hey, Galatians 5 and 1. And this is in the KJV. Hey, because uh I, I like to use the KJV because they use the KJV. Unto their own destruction, we use it to help build brothers up. So to let you know, like the books that they're using is really against what they're actually teaching. That's just a side note. This is uh, Galatians five and one it says, "Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty whereof wherewith Christ have made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage." You got it, bro. Keep keep reading. Yep. It says, Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Keep going. For I testify of every man that is circumcised that he is adapted to do the whole law. So Christ has become. You got it. You got it. Finish that point. Yep. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Uh, Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are falling from grace. The moment you tell a man to keep the law of Moses underneath the first covenant or under no covenant at all, to the best of your ability, you immediately fallen from grace, right? What did it say? I, I testify to you that you're a debtor to keep the whole law, the whole law. There's no such thing underneath the first covenant as keeping the law to the best of your ability. It doesn't work like that. Anybody teaching you to do these things is doing what? Um, real quick, Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. I'm going to show you what it is that they're doing to you. Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Yep, Galatians brother. 3 and 1, it says, O foolish Galatians who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes uh, Yahweh Mashiach have been evidently set forth, crucified among you. So, O Galatians, who have bewitched you, right? So, when we talk about guys bewitching guys, we're not just making this up. We're not just trying to attack you guys, you know, um, for no reason, right? This bewitching comes from a source, right? The Holy Bible, which we believe is the true word of God, right? Um, continue on, bro. God, it says, this only what I learn of you, receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Keep going. 
It said, are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? Why did he say, have you suffered so many things in vain? Because the Galatians in that time in the first century caught hell because of their beliefs. They caught hell because of their beliefs, right? Um, going up against these Greeks and these Greek gods and how they were persecuting the first century uh, churches. So Paul's saying, when Paul is writing this letter and he's really attacking these Judaizers, right? These men who was coming from Judea, uh, trying to bring men back into this bondage and trying to push um, the Mosaic law underneath them. What did he say, man? Uh, did you suffer all this in vain? Right? Because if you go back to being made perfect in the flesh, you know, that's not the gospel. And you're going to die in your error. You're going to die um, trying to justify yourself. So all that work that he did was worthless. And this is exactly what men are doing still to this day, 2,000 years after the death of Hamashiach. Well, you could finish that 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 off, and then we could go right back to uh, the book of Galatians, the second chapter. Come on, bro. Uh, Galatians 3. Unless you brothers had any, we wanted to make any points, you know, just jump right in, bro. We no, uh, no, you got it. Uh, uh basically, uh, hey, if if at this time now, if you're holding to that old law, you're being bewitched. You're being um, you're under a spell right now. You're on a you're on a spell that's been cooked up by uh, false prophets. Um, well, you wanted to go back to Galatians two. I just, I think it was you could finish that point that that was in that three. last. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you could go back to Galatians 2. Come on, Galatians 3 and uh, 5, it says, He therefore that administrated to you the spirit and work of miracles among you, do if he do if he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So you got guys, you got guys that's literally trying to make fun of us by saying that the the that there's trying to diminish the power of this word, the power of this gospel. Mind you, the same power, you know, the same word that formed this earth that you see, the same words that said, let there be light and behold the light, the same word that um, comes out and forms everything. What we're telling men is this word has the power to transform you, you know, to give you a, the Holy Ghost, to give you a heart of flesh, to give you understanding that's going to put the spirit of God in you to, to compel you to walk in a way that is separate from everybody else. Right. That you're going to that's going to force you not to commit adultery, um, not to walk in the flesh, uh, not to be a fornicator or not to be a liar and a thief. And But it's not you that's doing it. It's the spirit of the living God that's in you. But it's the, through the power of the word, not by the letter of the law. The letter of the law can't save you. It can't make you righteous. It can only show you where your shortcomings are. That's the only thing that it can do. But the spirit of God, which is Yahweh Shai, through, through the Holy Spirit could actually save you it can actually transform you it could actually justify you it can make you righteous so guys are trying to get you to hold on to a dead end um for what for what and it goes back to satan it goes right. back to satan right hey it goes back to yeah he's trying to buy him more time in the world you you can understand this by those those demons that ask the lord he said they said hey do you come to uh do you come to trouble us before our time? So they have a time where they're to reign and to and to be wicked on the earth right now. This is the evil's time. I got this precept for you going into faith. This is the uh, Romans 10 and 17. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing. Beautiful. And by the hearing by the word of God. Beautiful. So, so the faith is not going to come by the old law. The scripture tell you in Galatians what we're reading that the law is not a faith. The law is not a faith at all. And you have to you have to actually understand that the faith didn't the faith and the mercy and the grace didn't come until the Lord came. Until there that they they would have stoned that lady. I think that was in uh, I forgot in uh, in John I, I forgot what what that was in, but. They was going to stone that lady that committed adultery. So the, the mercy didn't come until the Lord came and he actually saved her basically from those Pharisees. They were going to stone her. Go ahead, brother. Um, Con, uh, you got it, though, bro. You had it. I, actually, I, let me just read this one real quick because I just want to harp on that point on how powerful the word is because they try to diminish that. They try to yep. they try to they try to 
minimize that as if that's nothing, you know, because they want to, they love glory and boasting in the flesh. They want to say what, what it is that they're doing. I, I, I did this. And that's not the gospel, bro. That's not what the Lord came to do. Um, so this is the book of Ephesians. Uh, this is the book of Ephesians chapter one, verse 11. And it says, uh, in whom we also have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be the praise of his glory, who was first trusted in Hamashiach, in whom ye also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Beautiful, beautiful. So so this is on another level where it has to be ingrained in you to actually believe. So you don't really believe in this if you're bewitching people to the old law. This is what we got to get brothers to really understand. That old law has nothing to do with the new. So if men are trying to tell you like, hey, well, this is the same thing they were doing in Acts 15. Remember in Acts 15? When uh, when Peter and them told them that they didn't have to follow the law to basically be of the Lord, they just have to follow what the Lord said. And Peter and them basically uh, told you that in Acts 15. Right. So the only thing you have to do is just have faith in the Lord's words. That's why his words are in red. But we have guys set up to teach you that the red, the letters in red really don't matter. You got to hold the old law. Don't forget about the old law. You know, it's heavy like that. Right. I got this in Acts 15 for you real quick, and then we can go back to Galatians. Uh, what was that, 2? Yep. Yeah, Galatians uh, 15 and 10. It says... Well, uh, right, now, one real quick. Hit one real quick, and then you could... You yeah. Go, yeah. All right. Uh, Galatians 15 and 1, it says, And a certain man which came down from Judea talked to brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. So this is the main, this is the crest of this argument. They call this what the uh the great council, the Dru council in Jerusalem. You know, say and, and again, I said this before, and I'll say this again. You know, nations have these court cases, these um supreme court cases um that shape and mold their society, you know what I'm saying? Ray V versus Wold or the Magna Carta or whatever, whatever in, in the worldly sense of aspect, these councils shaped and molded, you know, these these different uh, nations and groups. You have to understand what was happening in the Acts of 15 chapter because this council really, um, it, 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 it put a lot of discrepancies and a lot of, of of debates that are still being held to this day could put a lot of it to 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 close a lot of arguments to close if men would just have uncircumcised uh, uncir uh, circumcised ears in order to hear what is being said so this argument has already been had we had men coming down from judea saying that look brethren and uh in order for you for, for you to be saved you got to be circumcised after the, the the manner of moses right now you could go to 10 if you want Right. And I could if I could just add in there, that's the same thing that guys are doing when they tell you, well, you still have to follow the law and, you you know, you still have to worry about what Moses said. And we we're still under the law. Like I heard this video, they say, well, hey, well, guys telling you that, you know, you're, you're not under the law. They're going off. You still have to follow the law. No, you don't. What that does when you go back to Galatians, what that does is what did, what did Paul say? You're, you're frustrating the grace of the Lord. Because if you go back to the law after the fact that the Lord didn't die, then you're making the blood of the Lord in vain. There's just another point I want to add in there. And that's what guys are doing. So guys are not in the spirit doing that. So, But they won't understand that because they don't have the spirit of discernment and understanding. Right. Acts chapter 15 well, real quick, verse. Real quick, let me read this for yep. you real quick, right? Yep, um, yep, yep. Acts chapter 2 verse 14, right? And when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentiles and not as the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as the Jews do? We 
who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith in Yahweh Shah Mashiach, even we believe in Yahweh Shah Mashiach, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. But if we seek to be justified by Hamashiach, we ourselves are found sinners. Is therefore Yahweh Shah the ministers of sin? God forbid. Here's the thing, right? When we push this gospel, they always say that we're pushing lawlessness. So Paul asked this question, but if we seek to be justified by Hamashiach, are we ourselves found sinners? Are we sinners? Is, and then Paul said, is, is Christ the, the minister of Sid? God forbid, no, right? For right. if I build the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So if you try to run back to the law, to the thing that was put down, if you try to run back to the law, and, and, and seek to justify yourself in accordance to the law, now you become a transgressor. Now you become a sinner. Now you make the blood of Yahweh Shah Mashiach of non-effect unto you. Right? Because you're not, you're not, you're not looking at after the, as this thing as a faith thing. You're looking at this thing as a carnal thing. And he said to be carnally minded is death, right? For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. One more time. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might right. live, in, uh, live in God. You got it, bro. Right. And so men are making men transgressors. And this is what the Lord meant in uh, Matthew 23, when they make men a twofold a child of hell. So how, now you have it. The Lord came. And so now guys are making men transgressors by holding them to the law. So what they're doing is... is, is they're causing men to keep their sins on them because they don't have a redeemer because you don't have a redeemer holding the old law. Once you say that you got to keep the old law, you don't have a redeemer. So it's impossible for you to be redeemed because you think your justification is the law. If you get what I'm saying, you see what yeah, I'm saying? No, it tells you that it tells you it says it says in, in, the, in the next chapter, it says that Christ redeemed us. From the curse of the law, and then it says, "Ye that seek, you ye that are underneath that law, you're underneath God's curse." So, so uh, let me ask you a question. Let me let me just ask you this. So, why are guys saying they are waiting on something when when the Lord said He redeemed, but guys, brothers already. Why are guys waiting on something why, else? Bro. I'm gonna tell you why. That's a lack of faith. When you go to Hebrews the 11th chapter, it tells you that none of them. Uh, uh, seen the promise that was given to them, which was the kingdom of heaven, but they all lived their whole lives, right? Just walking and, and being in obedience and not actually seeing the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven. And because guys can't see the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, we're still in Babylon, right? They don't have no faith in the words of Hamashiach because they're right. still waiting for something. They have to physically see something in order to believe it. That's right, bro. That's exactly right. So, so we're dealing with guys that have the traits of teaching the Bible with no belief. So a lot of guys are teaching the Bible just for views and just to be seen really deep down. They don't even believe in what they're teaching. I think you did that video. Yeah, you did that video with the Sons of Thunder. And that clearly shows you that guys are teaching this, not even understanding what it really is. So it's really heavy in this time that we're, and the Lord set this up like this, man. The Lord set this up where you're going to have a pocket of, the, of us that actually have the understanding why all these guys that are on the street, they don't even know what they're talking about. I got Acts right here, 15. Let me, let me, before we go to Acts 15, let me just finish out this in, in Galatians. Go ahead, man. brother. You got it. It says, yep. I am crucified with Yahweh Shai. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I but Christ liveth in me in the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness Beautiful. come by the law. Then Hamashiach is dead in vain. Yep. Exactly. So, so they're making the death of the Lord in the first century in vain, by not following the Lord after he died on the cross. So we know, you know, us, we know, like 
when the Lord died, that's when everything started. But we know going back in the history, even though the Lord came and died on the cross, what did they do? They went back to business as usual. They went back to Caesar. They went back to holding the old law. And they did this. Yeah, they went back in the, the centuries of holding men to the law after that. And what were they doing? They were killing men that were actually opposed to that um, for, for hundreds of years after that. You see what I'm saying? So now what's happening now is us brothers that were really with the Lord and teaching will recognize that we were actually teaching this before and everything is coming back to us. So if this ain't coming back to you, then you will not actually have faith in the Lord dying. You're going to hold to the old law. So when you hold to the old law, that is a major sign that you have nothing to do with the Lord. And and the, and the new covenant and the real gospel, right. because these guys to be like, well, we have we're teaching a gospel. Well, really, you don't have a gospel. You just have a camp doctrine. That's a difference between that. Well, 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 well they'll say it. I heard a guy in, in my old camp. He said, we don't come out here to teach good tidings. That's not the gospel. You're admitting out of your own mouth that you don't preach the gospel. What is the gospel? The gospel is the good tidings to bind up the brokenhearted, right? And what was that yeah. again? Going back to the, the, the promise of the new covenant, which was to give us what? A new heart. I can't believe that guy said that. I can't believe he said that, bro. So you're defeating the purpose of going on the highways. That's the whole purpose. And, and the Lord fulfilled that. And what's that? Luke, the fourth chapter, he said this day when he got up and read that Isaiah 68 in the synagogue, he said this day is this prophecy fulfilled. He right. binded up men that were broken hearted. He healed men. He gave they gave the Holy Ghost to men in the first century. Men received everlasting life in the first century. In the bodies that they had, they mortified the deeds of the body. They were sanctified. Right. In the bodies, like you say, in the bodies that they have. Now, I think I read earlier uh 2 Corinthians 6, where it tells you that you will purchase with a price. And in Acts 20, it tells you that men will the Lord purchased men with his body. So he bought men when he died. You see what I'm saying? Yep. So guys that wasn't purchased, they're going to deny the purchasing process and make you wait on it. You see what I'm saying? So, but we have a connection unto that spiritually. It's heavy. It's heavy I think the brother got a scripture too. He um Romans, what's that? Romans, he got Romans 9, and we can come back to Acts real quick. Yeah. What was that? Romans 9 and um 31. I read it, I read it right quick. Romans 9 and 31, it says, but Israel, which follow after the law of righteousness, have not obtained the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because thy sought it not by faith, but as it were by the books of the law, for they stumble at the stumbling stone. Go ahead, brother. You got it, brother. I think you are mute, bro. Oh, con, con. So yeah, that's um, that's basically that's what we're experiencing in these last days because they can't separate themselves from the old ordinances. All right, they can't, they can't, they think that seeking the Lord, they think that righteousness is going to come by way of them trying to fulfill all those laws when you can't do that. So the Lord gave us a simple way to fulfill righteousness without the law. That's why He was manifest, and this is what men can't believe and have faith in they just have faith in moses that's why the lord had, it got down to the point where the lord was like you just moses uh disciples man you guys just believe in moses way he already spoke of me so why don't you believe me you see what i'm saying so it goes back to this the word not having a place in our in a majority of our people because they're not really trying to repent deep down they're like the lord told nicodemus they're not really trying to be reborn that's why you have so much uh, occurrences of, of mixtures of things of the world and 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 uh, us being Israelites in these last days. It's a mixture. They try to mix the truth with the world because they haven't fully put off this world. <laughs> you see, that's why they're still seeking uh, that worldly carnal ordinances of concerning that law. That's what that's that's why they seek righteousness through that. That's because they're of the world. That's the only thing they can understand. Spirituality is something you can't see. You know, and that's what they're not really, um, they don't have access to it. They think they do, but they have no access to something that's given to you as a gift. You know, if it's never given to you, then you're going to continuously be under a curse of trying to uh, justify yourself with works of that law. I got you, bro. I got a precept for you, brother. That's good. But, yeah. um, 
Uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 11. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of sins of flesh, this body that we're in, sins of flesh by the circumcision of Hamashiach, buried with them in baptism, wherein also ye are raised with them through the faith of the operation of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, having he quickened together with him, having forgiven you of all trespassing, is the point. Blotting out the handwritings of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. That's right. You got it, brother. Yeah, so what he did was he blotted out those those handwritings of ordinances, right, which was against us. Because what did Paul call it, right? That first covenant, the ministration of death. It was the ministration of, of flesh, the ministration of stones. What did it do? It co condemned us. It condemned us literally to death, right? So he, he died on a cross, right, so that we in these bodies um, could be raised with him. All right, in his in his resurrection, right, being baptized, submerged in the water, and coming up, um, speaking tongues, um, and and being uh, uh uh having him dwell in us, because again, this is the whole purpose, you know, for him to dwell in us. But he blotted out those handwritings of ordinances that was against us, nailing them to the cross, and that goes into the middle wall of petition. That goes into why, in accordance to the flesh, you no longer have to be circumcised, but. He gave you a spirit. So now the circumcision is of the ears and of the flesh. And guys are negating the, the spirituality aspect of it and still trying to hold on to the, the carnal, telling guys, oh, right. uncircumcised, you can't touch the Torah, or you can't receive a blessing, or or just, just holding to the old law in general. But you got it, bro. I just want to say faith, okay? Faith comes by hearing like we just read. It don't, it don't come by the old law. So if you're in the old law, you're not in the spirit. When I went into John 9 this morning, you, you notice in John 9, when he healed that blind man, these guys did not have the power to heal nobody. Right. But by that blind man actually being obedient to what the Lord told him to go do, he said, hey, go wash your eyes off in this certain place and then you'll receive sight. And the Lord and that guy, he went and did that. And so when, the, when that guy uh, obeyed and listened and he had faith in what the Lord told him to do, he went and washed his eyes and he received sight. So now when he received sight, guess who were upset because they couldn't heal him? The scribes and the Pharisees that were Moses' disciples. So this, this is what we're dealing with in this time. And it's so beautiful that everybody don't really understand who they are. When you hold to Moses, you show who you are. You show that you didn't believe in the Lord. Basic, basic, basically, you wanted to stone the Lord because we can go to countless accounts. And in John and, and Matthew, where they wanted to stone the Lord for doing these certain things. Go ahead, brother. Right. So if you brothers want, we can we could go to Galatians. Yeah, Galatians. Galatians. What was that? You want to go back to three? Uh was I think it was in two. Con, I got this last scripture in Acts 15. That's I right. wanted to really yeah, I really it. wanted to grab this point for us right now because this brings a lot out too. Just with that wall, um uh, that wall of uh partition which broke down the barrier between the Gentiles and the Jews. It broke down that barrier. So, so with that, let me just explain this. With that barrier being broke down, now certain Gentiles can believe in the Lord. Just like it's only certain Jews right now. It's certain Israelites that believe in the Lord. Not everybody believes in this. Even guys in camps, they believe in the old law of Moses. That don't mean you believe in the Lord. Because if you believe in Moses, you can't believe in the Lord. You can't the Lord said you can't serve two masters. I don't know what guys think that means, but that means you can't serve Moses law and the new law at the same time. And 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 let me say this, man. So when you say we're teaching men lawlessness, so you're saying the Lord, he was lawless. Is that what you're saying? All right. Uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 10. It says, now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? 
which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Go ahead, brother. Expound on that. Yeah, and and, and this is what you're doing because again, um, the old law of Moses, you know what I'm saying, and, and c- compares to the new the, the law of Hamashiach. What you do is you put a yoke upon men because even tells you yourself, Moses said, "Why are you placing this burden on me?" Moses said that I'd rather have died, right? Now, compare that and contrast that to what Yahweh Shai said. He said, my burden is, is, not, is, is not heavy. You know what I'm saying? Mo- Moses said, you put this yoke on me. He said, my yoke is light. So there's a contrast here. There's a, there's a big difference between these two things here. But when you try to, when you try to bring men um, and, and put that, that yoke of bondage on their necks, that neither them and we in the them we're talking about men who walked with Yahweh Shai, men who walk with Yahweh Shai. They said us neither our forefathers. So you go to the the top dog, go to the illest person, your illest character. Who you want to go to, David, the one that um committed adultery and, and and murder. You know, put that man on the front line to be killed. Who you want to go to, Solomon, the wisest, uh, what was said to be the wisest man who was actually worshiping uh, other gods. You know, Samson. You know, who, who you want to go to? Nobody, as great as these men were, were able to uh, uh, bear this daunting task of not breaking no law. Adam couldn't do it. Adam had the most, Adam had probably had the best body than anybody other than Yahweh Shai. <laughs> Can you imagine the body he had, the water he was drinking, the plants, that, right. like the plants, exactly. the, the food he was, it was the, the the first molded, you know what I'm saying? Can you imagine? Mm-hmm. He got tempted by the devil and he failed. Israel right. was in the wilderness, tempted by the devil, and we failed. Yahweh Shai went and got into the into the temp, uh the, the desert. He got tempted by the Lord, and what did he do? He conquered. He was the one that conquered. He did it. Yeah. So why are you trying to put a yoke on the, the, the whole purpose of the Lord being in the heavens and, and it, that great cry went out, you know, who's able to open this book? Who's able to release, op, uh, get this book and release the seals and nobody, nobody on the earth, nobody underneath the earth, nobody in the heavens was able to do that. Right. But that lamb, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, that if you can be made righteous by the law of Moses is to say that you can um, open that book, man. That you could you can do that daunting task and you don't qualify for that. You don't understand what you're doing. That's the only way the most high could really see who's with them and who's not not with them. It's by this right here. This who believes in him, him and who doesn't believe in him. And a lot of men are just proven in these last days. You guys just don't believe. You guys could call upon the names. You guys could talk about shooting laser beams out of your eyes. You guys could go on the highways when it's a zero degrees outside and push that carnal doctrine that you that you pushing it is to no avail it is to no avail if you make the death of our lord and savior of non-effect and you're putting right. the iron on men that you know your forefathers could keep because you're disrespecting the lord go ahead bro you got it right and that's exactly true and so is it it is very safe to say that a lot of you guys on the streets right now uh you're teaching in vain unless you're teaching the lord's word in the new covenant the old covenant, Paul said, we're dead to that old law. It says what it says. And so we read, just read in Acts 10 that um, you're putting the, uh, a yoke on our people that our, even our forefathers was never, ever, even ever to keep that. So with the Lord coming, he actually abolished that so you could just have faith in him. And that replaces that old law. But a lot of you guys are holding men to the law because you haven't been redeemed. So you don't believe. So what you're teaching is other men not to believe. I got this precept for you in Revelations real quick going yep, into the seal. It. Yep, you got it. Because you mentioned the seals. So Revelations 5 and 5, uh, it start says. At, start at 1. Start at 1 so we can get the full picture of what's going on, what's yep. happening in the heavens. This is a heavenly understanding. This is yep. a vision of what's happening in the heavens, bro. Yep. Gone, bro. Uh, Revelations 5 and 1, it says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written, and on the backside sealed with seven seals. 
And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. Hey, this is an open challenge. That men are in these last days saying that this daunting task that they could fulfill. This is an open challenge, right? Go ahead, bro. You got it. Yep. And it says, and no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth is able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And let me say something, bro. Um, so if the Lord ain't really um supping with you like that, you don't have an understanding of the gospel and the new covenant. You don't have it. It you all you have is a camp doctrine. So no, no seals are really being loosed unto you. With the loosing of the seals. It is the loosing of the, the hidden matter. It is the loosing of the understanding that certain men have been redeemed in the body that they're in. But you have guys telling you that they haven't been redeemed or they need a new body. If you had that understanding, then you wouldn't be teaching men they need a new body. You you, you get what I'm you you get what I'm saying, bro? Uh. If if you had that understanding, you wouldn't be teaching that. So this is why we're, we're 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 bringing out what we're bringing out, and we're teaching what we're we're preaching what we're preaching because what we see is that guys really the Lord has not actually revealed nothing unto them, like the scripture tell you in uh, Matthew eleven, He revealed this un unto whomsoever He revealed this to. So what we see is guys have been revealed a camp doctrine. It does not have nothing to do with the doctrine of the first century of the new covenant with the lord which was teaching right and so now we are seeing that and we're exposing that because souls are at risk they're teaching you that a, a carnal death is coming of missiles and microchips right. Right. and we're teaching you uh, of a eternal death right they're not teaching you an eternal death they're teaching you some carnal shit with russia that's not that is not the main topic the main topic is the fight for your soul right and your soul is going to eternally going to disappear. Right. And that's why second edges and it says the multitude is going to perish. And, and the, the whole other world is only meant for a few. Why is the Lord saying that? Because a lot of guys are going to be cut off like they were cut off. Souls are going to be cut off. So we're not we're not we're not teaching you something about Russia and some carnal death. It is an eternal death that's coming. And this is how it's been revealed unto us, not no carnal shit. So we're preparing men to get their souls together for this judgment. So just to say, if you do die, you'll be good with the Lord because you did what the Lord expected you to do. Now, a lot of guys, they don't even believe in hell or they don't even believe that they're redeemed. So that shows you that guys are cut off already. It's not just because we're saying guys cut off. They're showing you that. You have to link the scriptures up. The scriptures are spiritual. Men are corny. Go ahead, brother. My bad. No, no, you good, bro. You good, bro. You rolling, bro. That's it's true, bro. It's true, bro. We're not warning you about no carnal death, bro. Even when it talks, Mitch makes mention of set a man on a watchtower. He's not telling you. He said you you're looking out for their souls, not looking out for your flesh. The Lord warned us of men that has the ability uh, to be the fear to fear the man that can. The small, not the fear of the man that can kill your flesh, but the fear of the man that can kill both your flesh and your soul. So this is what we're warning you about. We're not warning you about um, a carnal death, bro. You know, because we don't. We we we've been given a spiritual understanding of this thing. Our our understanding of this is not carnal. It's is 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 spiritual. Come on, brother. So I, I, if you got something, go I ahead. got revelation. Do you want to? You want to go? You want to no, finish this? No, no, definitely finish that in Revelation. Uh, Revelation five for sure. All right, Revelation three and uh, five and three. It says, "And no man in earth, no man in heaven or on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look th look upon look thereon." And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open to read the book, neither to look thereon, bro. That is heavy to really understand this. So you're not going to be given here in manner, bro, if you're not worthy. Do you understand? So if you've been given hidden manner and hidden books and certain understandings, and you're bringing certain of it out, linking it to what the Lord and the prophecies are doing, you that means you were worthy. So a lot of guys are not worthy. 
You know, I've heard these guys deny Enoch, and I've heard guys deny certain things. You know, not saying that you have to know Enoch, but Enoch is a part of the books. And this is something that was actually uh, taken out to not give you more understanding. But the Lord is, is the supreme understanding. So if the Lord is dealing with you and suffering with you, he's going to give you a supreme understanding. He's not going to give you a carnal understanding. It's going to give you a heavier understanding that you've been receiving. And this is what we receive and we have to share it with you. You see what I'm saying? We have to we have to put it out there to get the blood off our hands. Because at the end of the day, like I said, I think I said this. You us, you can't get before their throne and say, like, you didn't hear brothers actually teaching you um, these certain things. You can't lie and say you didn't hear this. You heard it. You heard we was teaching the new covenant. We were right. teaching you to repent. We were telling you right. that those camps have been infiltrated by Satan. And if you're still, the reason guys can't come out of camps is because of the fame and the uh, notoriety. They can't, they can't, um, they can't have a victory over the flesh. You see what I'm saying? They can't get over the flesh. They have to keep their name good. They have to keep an image. And that's what's stopping them from really understanding this too. It is it's, it's many different variations that is stopping men from actually seeing this. One of the major ones, too, is the hate that guys have in their heart and the unbelief that they have. They believe that the, this can only come from elders. And what they don't understand is the elders, they're not the standard for if the Lord is actually dealing with somebody. It's not through the elders. It's not their call. The, Paul said to himself, I didn't receive this of men. So Paul is telling you he didn't receive this of men. This was something that was given unto them. Hey, and then check it out. When Paul actually got it and he started teaching it, he was hated by the same synagogue that he was under. So all this is playing itself out again. I got Revelations 5 for you right here, bro. Yep. So Revelations 5 and 5, it says, And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, have prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Go ahead, brother. Um, now it said the lion, keep reading though, bro. Yep. It says, And behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb, it had been slain, having wow. seven horns. This is heavy, bro. This is heavy, bro. You know why this is so heavy? Because we talk about the birth, the life, the death, the conquering of death, and the resurrection of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, right? When Yahweh Shah made stops, bro, you know what I'm saying? When he went to the heart of the earth, he came back. He told his disciples, like, yo, bro, I got to come back. I got There's a ceremony that has to be held. You know what I'm saying? I got to go to the heavens. And But when I come back, I'm going to give you guys the gift of the Holy Ghost. We always talk about how, you know, the Lord hadn't been glorified, right? Uh, 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 he had to wait for that sacrificial lamb, right? So now he goes up into the heavens, and it's this great ceremony. That's why it says a lamb as it had been slain. So John the Revelator is there in his time, in the time of, again, that's why it says that was, that is, and is to come. So John the Revelator was there in his time. He, this, this crucifixion. Um, this lamb had already been slain, had already been slain. So John is seeing this in first time. He's there and he's it's, it's, it's heavy, bro. He's he's like, you think he's in two places at one time. John was there. It wasn't like John had a dream and John was there. John was when you when you're taken up in the spirit, time don't operate like you it operates right here. So he's seen this, but the but the purpose, the point is there's only one man that is that lamb without blemish, bro. One lamb, one person that was able to open up the seals, and it was Yahweh Shai. You by seeking to try to justify yourself by way of the law, bro. You 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 are again. You're making this whole purpose of non-affecting to you, and you will be annihilated. You will be destroyed. You will be destroyed. You will be put cast into the lake of fire forever. When the Lord said, uh, "Depart from me." You work of iniquity, for I have not known you, is because you have not been joined unto him via his covenant. A, a marriage is a covenant that you you make with somebody. 
what we're doing is we're bidding men to the marriage. And you got to understand that in that parable, there was men that was making excuses on why they couldn't do this. You know, some men had men, men are telling you, you need a new body. Some men are telling you that they just copped a new house. They just got married. They just did this, giving you all these excuses on why hey, they, they need to, do. they need to go to their own land. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I got a land to, 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 you know what I'm saying? The tend to, you know what I'm saying? If you, if you, if you're done with that, I want to read this for you, bro. Uh, Romans the seventh chapter, because it goes into what the, the, uh, the covenant, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the dying to uh, Moses, i.e. the law of Moses, i.e. the first covenant, i.e. the Levitical priesthood and the, the being joined unto the order of Melchizedek, the law of, of Hamashiach, the new covenant, the second covenant, which is able to give us life. Right, right. Uh, yeah, just just real quick, cause um, the, real quick because the Lord right here in Revelation uh, five and six. Yep. The, the the let me read it again real quick. It says uh, Revelation five and six, and behold, and lo, the midst of the throne, uh, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb. As it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the spirits of God sent forth unto all the earth. Now, let me just link these real quick with Isaiah, because this is what Isaiah was speaking real quick. Mm -hmm. Man, the book of Isaiah is a very heavy book, man. I think Isaiah has more. Um, Isaiah has more. Uh, mentions of the Lord, there may be any other prophet, maybe he has a lot of uh allegories and um parables linking to the Lord. He really does, he has a lot. I think he has the most. Let me let me read this real quick Isaiah 11. Yeah, I think Isaiah has the most parables going into the Lord, man. It's, it's a lot. I think the brother sent one in Isaiah 22. Was that open my eyes up the other day? Did you get that one? No, I didn't get it. It's Isaiah 22 when it goes into the royal law. Remember when we went into the royal law? Yeah. You went into it this week? Yeah, yeah. So the brother, he sent one in Isaiah 22, and it, and it tells you that the Lord is the royal law. So um, I want to go into those seven, seven spirits that Revelation 5 is talking about. This is uh, Isaiah 11. I'm going to go right to the point. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at 1, and I'm going to just go through it. Isaiah 11 and 1, it says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, a branch that shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. 1, 2, the Spirit of counsel and might. 3, 4, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And shall make him of a quick understanding. And in the fear of the Lord, he shall not judge after the sight of the eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. This is going into those seven spirits that is throughout the earth right now. And this is the spirit of discernment. This is the spirit of the Lord's eyes. This is the spirit that is on us that could actually see. And Isaiah was letting you know that too. Let me grab this for you, brother. Let me grab this one more real quick. Isaiah 22. And the brother, man, he brought this out. <laughs> Isaiah 22. And um, 21. I think he brought this out in the NLT. But he, Isaiah 22 and 21. And I will clothe him with thy robe and strengthen him with thy girdle. And I will commit thy government unto his hand. And he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Check this out. And it says, and the keys of the house of David, I will lay upon his shoulder. Bro, who is this talking about, bro? That's, that's, that's the Lord. Woo! So the Lord tells you he gives you the keys to, to death and hell. So I, that's all I wanted to get. Yeah, what you want to go back to? Read it, read it real quick in the NLT. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's better. It's better in the NLT. That's it's what he said me in the NLT. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. It said, I will give him the key of the house of David, the highest position in the royal court. And when, his, uh, when he opens doors, no one will be able to close them. 
And when he closes doors, no one will be able to open them. Beautiful. <laughs> that don't he tell you that in Revelations? If he yeah. stuck with you, if yep. he stuck with you, no bad man. Beautiful, man. You guys, I, you. I sit in, He said, "I sit at the door." Man, you guys hold him in, Moses, bro. You're missing out, man. You're really missing out, bro. It's just so much. It's so much, bro. It really is. What you want to? What you want to grab, bro? Um. So, um. Galatians three. Uh, Galatians three. Um. Let me. I'm gonna read this real quick. I'm gonna read this yep. in Romans seven. You got it. Uh, Romans seven and one. Just, just going into the, uh, just the last him of this last point on the law. And if we want to go into something else, we could, or we close it out. It's up to you, brothers. Um, Romans chapter is seven. That, is that brother New Don? If you, if you got something to say, brother, real quick. If you, if you want to squeeze something in there, brother, if you can. Yeah, con, con, if you can, bro. Um. Um. Romans chapter okay. seven. Go ahead, bro. Stock here. Hello. Yep. Yeah, I was just gonna say, um, like I put on the comment board, um, basically the Lord was the He was. I think it says He's the Godhead bodily, so He has all the wisdom from the throne, which is from above in His body. That's what He. That's what He was symbolic for. Like that's why He said He was all of those different uh, attributes and titles. So when men reject the Lord. That's why the Lord said you're rejecting everlasting life because that comes from above. You know, that's only something that could be given to you from above. And the Lord gave us, the Most High gave us his son to be nourished spiritually off of because he's the Godhead bodily. He's everything of righteousness and uprightness bodily. And men, you know, they despised him and rejected him because they they stumbled at his teachings. But that's all That's all I had. You guys are uh, basically in the same arena with uh, Isaiah too. So you got it. Con. Um... Uh, Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have demeaned over a man as long as he liveth. Uh, for a woman which have a husband is bound by the law to her husband as long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So if you, while your husband liveth, uh, slack is so then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she should be called an adulteress. But if she, if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, it's like here. Um, wherefore, my brethren, ye are also become dead to the law by the body of Hamashiach, that ye should be married to another, even to him who raised who was raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So, so just this is going into, you know what I'm saying? Moses came with that first covenant. He came with the Levitical priesthood. When the Lord died, we died. That died. The Levitical priesthood died. The laws of Moses died, right? And what was risen up and what was born, born again, was the order of Melchizedek. Hamashiach's laws in the new covenant. You have to die to that old law in order to be joined to the Lord. All right. Again, when you marry, that word marriage means to be joined unto. When you marry to somebody, you enter into a contract with them. And that contract is void. The Lord said himself when he came on the earth, you cannot divorce your wife saving fornication. What did we do? We fornicated. So that first covenant was broken. Right. So that's this. This is what's happening in, in, in this time. We're married to Hamashiach through his covenant. You can't be married to somebody without a covenant. Men are in between the two. And this is the reason why you've seen them with their doctrine that they have, telling you that you they're making mention of grace and peace and mercy in the blood, but they're telling you to keep the law of Moses to the best of you. But that's spiritual idol adultery that you're committing. Yep. You're confused. And it's causing you to commit spiritual. That's, that's, a, that's a sin that's worthy of death in the eyes of God. Yep, yep, that's that's correct. That's correct. So at, at this point, at this point, things have happened already. The laws have changed. Men have been redeemed already. That's already happened. So what you have is guys that are set up to 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 make sure you don't really understand it. That's all. 
But these things have happened and you have to figure out where you lay on the side of salvation. Do you lay on the side of the Pharisees or do you lay on the side of the ones that actually believe? Because if you lay, if you lay on the side of the ones that actually believe, then you can understand what we're saying. If you don't lay on the side of the ones that believe, you are opposed to the new covenant. And all the new covenant is, is just the teaching of the Lord. It's just his testimony. That's all it is. So if you don't believe in that, then that means you don't believe in the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Yep. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Dear brothers and sisters, the longing of my hearts and prayers is to God for his people of Israel to be saved. I know what enthusiastic they have for God, but it's a misdirected zeal. For they don't understand God's way of making people right with themselves, refusing to accept God's way. They cling to their own way of getting right with God by trying to keep the law. For Christ had already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all that believe on him are made right with God. Right. In fact, let me say this, man. Let me let me just say this. Now, you may say something. You may say you believe in this and that and third, this, that, and the third, but your spirit is saying otherwise. So it's you can't hide. If you're teaching this, no matter what you're teaching, we could tell where you stand in the spirit. You can say whatever you want, but through the understanding of, of what's coming out of your mouth, we understand that a lot of guys are not with the Lord right now. And then and you and, that, and that's it. It's it's not about what. It's about what you're saying, but then a lot of guys will say one thing and then hold you to the law. If you really had the understanding, you would not be holding men to that law at all. And I think the, the brother got John um, 1 and uh, 14. Go ahead, brother. I think you, you wanted to still read the rest of that? Um, I, no, that's it. I got John 1 yeah. and 14. Yeah, this he said well, John, John. 1 and 14, yep. John 1 and 14 through 18. Yep. Yep, this is the book of John, chapter 1, verse 14. Let me get, you want it in NLT? I'll get it in the KJV. You can get it in the NLT. We already killed these guys in the KJV. All right. I love I love the NLT too, but preferably I teach in the KJV to, to show these guys that while you keep teaching in the KJV, it's against your camp doctrine. But I love the KJV too. I love the NLT too, you know? I even love the White Clap Bible. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, brother. You got it. John 1 and 14. So the word became human and made Ooh. his home amongst us. He was of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we brother. have seen his glory. Go ahead, bro. You got it. Hey, Zion. Oh, my goodness, bro. The word became human. It became flesh, bro. Mm -hmm. Bro, we're breaking down the spirit to human beings. It's heavy, bro. Mm -hmm. This is something else, man. That's why we say it's like you have a have you have to like you say like you be saying you have to cleanse out your temple. You have to let go. the The first major thing you have to let go is camp doctrine because it's, it's it has you in a blasphemous spirit against the Lord. It has you in unbelief, and you're That's believing. Crazy, Elderly men over what the scriptures is saying. That's what the camp doctrine is doing to you. Heavy, it has you believing in men That's over heavy. what the scriptures are saying, bro. You, you, you notice how it says the word became human, and Ooh. we keep, we keep mentioning of the power of the word. So these men think that they're rejecting. Um, they, they don't believe in him. That's why they be like these guys are just saying all you got to do is believe in. They don't believe, and 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 what they're doing is they're crucifying him. That's why it says. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, even they that pierced him. You, you didn't have to be in Jerusalem in the first century to crucify him. When you heard the logos, when you heard the word, and you scoffed to get it against it, and you didn't believe it, you crucify him. When you take things out of the scriptures, you put him to death, bro. You crucify him. You're guilty of that uh, of, of his blood. It's crazy, bro. It, right. It means cru crucify means to cross out. You're crossing out, guys. This is why they put the Lord on the cross. In the first century, they were crossing guys out. If they came against the, the Roman government, they would cross your ass out. So this is what happened. And so you got to understand, too, Pilate didn't want to cross the Lord out. Pilate didn't. He Deep down, he didn't want to cross the Lord out. The Jews wanted to cross the Lord out. You have to really understand that. And they're doing that with their doctrine. So it's not just a, it's not like, 
they're killing all the ones that believe in the new covenant. Now it's more as a assassination of the doctrine of the new covenant that they're killing now. So they're killing the Lord through their doctrine by holding men to the law. That's how you're killing, crossing the Lord out by replacing him with the law. Go ahead, brother. And we've seen his glory, the glory of the father's one and only son. John testified about him when he shouted to the crowds. This is the one I was talking about when I said someone is coming after me who was far greater than I am. And he exists long before me <laughs> for the uh, for his abundance. We have all received one gracious blessing after another for the law was given through Moses. But God's unfailing love and faithfulness came through Hamashiach. Yeah, so again, the law was given through Moses, but grace um, came through Hamashiach. Please don't mix the two. Don't mix the two right. covenants. Don't mix right, the two marriages. Right, because there's no grace in the old law. The law, That's the right. scripture tell you that the law is not of faith, man. It looks like, well, why, what can't you understand about that? So we understand that really it's not men holding men to the old law. It's, it's Satan. It's the principalities of hate. The principalities of hate are holding men to the law and envy and jealousy. And remember, the demons knew when the Lord came on the scene, they asked him, like, hey, is it time for us to, you know, you want to, uh, what, did, what, did, what did them demons say? Is it, is, do you come to torment us before our before time? time? Yeah. So these guys with these principalities on them, they're in the spirit of holding their time. If you get what I'm saying, so yeah. they're they they hate the new covenant because it's their time now. You see what I'm saying? Right. So we know according to Luke 14, Luke 14 tells you that that you should not take the highest seat. You see what I'm saying? So they have taken the highest seat and they want to preserve their time. You get what I'm saying? It's crazy because they're along with their father, the devil, that are of this world. And so how you keep the spirit is doing what the Lord did. You go to a deserted place alone when, when you're trying to, when men try to make you exalted. These are principles that we have to follow. We have to follow what the Lord did in order to keep the spirit. You see what I'm saying? So, so I'm going to say this, you know, like our thing, you, it's more of you seeing and understanding the Lord than you actually seeing us. Because it's, it's kind of like we want we want to work as it's at the spirit work and as the angels work. The angels are working, but you would never see them. The spirit is working, but you would never see the spirit. You have to have a spiritual eye to see the spirit. And so this this is how we work. We work through the same principles. We're not here to, to for you to see us, see the spirit that brothers are in and what we're explaining. So you can get yourself out of the second death. It is not about chips. It is not about nothing carnal. Remember, the Lord said the carnal mind is enmity with God. It is against God. So if you're if you're teaching men carnal chips all day, you're against God, bro. Along with teaching them the law. That's all I, I want to say, brother. That's all, all right. I want to say. Uh, I'm gonna close. I'm gonna close it out on this. Um, last yeah, you got it. You got it, bro. Um, Hebrews chapter ten, verse uh, twenty-eight. It says, for anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy Ooh. on the testimony of two or three witnesses. So please understand that. They, don't mix mercy with that the law of Moses, bro. It, 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 it didn't exist. You got caught picking up a, a, a bundle of sticks. You know, you was out of there, bro. Underneath the, the uh, two or three witnesses. That's the right. law. If, if your woman committed adultery, she was out of there. They was going to stone her ass. Yeah. That's, if you committed adultery, you was out of there, bro. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So yep. You, like, like they're, they're, come on, brothers. Like, this is easy. So, again, if anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses, please don't mix the two. Please, you, you anger the son when... Uh, you anger the father when you mix the two. So with that, I hope and pray that that was edifying. I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Harakwa Kadash. Hey, Shalom to the next time we say uh, uh, Shalom. <laughs> hey, Shalom.